I've been covering this topic for a while and I really hate the fact that I don't live close to the strike because I would love to just go down there and film and talk to a couple of people. But uh, I just get what you guys get from social media and it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, look at this one, right? Um, Twitter hates pro-union female TV writers. I, I love the fact that she's like, female. Because she can't say the word woman because it means something completely different in 2023 than what it meant 10 years ago. So she has to say female. But also notice how interestingly she doesn't say, I have been a writer for 20 years, or I have been a writer for 10 years, or I have been a writer that managed to create this masterpiece, or I've been a writer that graduated uh, from Oxford or from Harvard. No, uh, the... the the only thing that makes her stand out is female. And I gotta say, you know, if you're going to go down the route of identity politics as a cisgender, uh, heteronormative, uh, patriarchal troll, I can only empathize with writers that are also cisgender, heteronormative, patriarchal trolls because they represent me. All right? Now, I do not wish this lady ill or anything like that. It's just that I do not feel represented by her. I want Hollywood to hire more cisgender, heteronormative, patriarchal trolls because that's what the academia from the United States of America has told me. Columbia University has opened my mind. It has awakened me. Right, like I'm now woke to, to all of these things that are happening in the world and how representation functions and why representation is important. So unless you're showing me that heteronormative patriarchal troll with the plaque, then I, I just can't feel supportive. That doesn't mean that I'm feeling against or any ill will. It's just I, I cannot pledge my support. But anyway, right. So um, she apparently she started to block report people and now she just shut down her entire comment section. Now, she's not getting threats or anything. It's just that she's getting people that do not sympathize with whatever is going on. Uh, because most of these writers are having this very cringe uh, plaques. L like, look at this. Right, First of all, you have this lady which is doing a public protest, but she's covering her face when the camera comes up. Like, why are you doing this? L like, if I were to protest for my rights, uh, why would I not want the cameras to be there? Like, that's the whole point. Like, you want people... To see that you're out there and you're outraged. But anyway, right. Without writers, you can't even finish this. Okay, right. Um, I, I gotta say, it's not the worst. Like, I have seen much worse. Uh, I like your offer as much as you like an angry female lead. See, that's the point. I love angry female leads in anime. Because I actually know how to write a compelling story and how to make interesting characters. But if it's a Western female lead, it is impossible for these people to make a likable, angry female lead. Like, they just do not know how to do it. So, unfortunately, I do understand where she is coming from. Like, she should add here an angry Western female lead, right? Um, I only know about anime, but I'm pretty sure that the South Koreans can also make a compelling, angry female lead, um... I'm curious, like, if the Indians, like Bollywood, right? Like, th can they make an angry female lead? I think they can, right? It's just the Westerners that have lost the ability to do this. And these are the writers that I should sympathize with. And, and their, their entire problem is that their demands are not that unreasonable, because I looked at the list of demands. Their problem is that the public does not empathize with their struggle. Like, they could have actually won this easily if the public would have cared, but I'm looking at Twitter, and it's not just me. It's like, almost overwhelmingly, the comments towards them are negative. Look at this. Our therapists keep saying we have to stand up for ourselves, so here we are, sorry. Dude, I don't care about what your therapists are saying. Like, you're, you're using this in order to gather sympathy from the public. Like, this is the whole reason why you're going on a protest. You're going on a protest so that you show the public how important you are, so that the public puts pressure on the company you're working at in order to give you the better pay. We have issues too. We, but but like you don't hear about what my therapist is saying because I can't fucking afford a therapist. But I think the main hammer in the nail and, and why people don't feel very sympathetic has to do with the Lord of the Rings of Power Plus Privilege, where they had an entire episode 
that made fun about people that are gonna take our gerbs, right? So you had like the Numerians, they were upset about the elves, right? Because the elves were actually more stronger and more smarter and more intelligent than the humans. So they were more able to take their jobs. Well, now you have ChatGPT that's literally more smarter and more capable than humans and it's taking your jobs away. And you're like, ChatGPT doesn't have childhood trauma while smiling. Like, if you're a writer and you're protesting because your living conditions are so bad, why would you be smiling? Like, how do you want me to take you seriously when you're smiling? But secondly, you're basically saying, oh, well, like, ChatGPT doesn't have childhood trauma. Why do I care? That's That sounds like a you problem, not like a ChatGPT or me problem. And the funny thing is, like, people have actually gone to ChatGPT and they have asked it to write some better slogans for the writers. And look at this. Words are priceless, but my talent is worth a Hollywood fortune. Great stories deserve great compensation. Pay the writers what they're worth. So if you can't write a couple of sentences to save your job, to convince the public why you should be paid more, how can you possibly justify that people care about you working? Like at this point, you're a hazard to our entertainment. Like if you can't write a simple sentence in order to gather some sympathy from the crowd, you want to write Rings of Power plus Privilege? You want to write the new Stargate? You you want to write Star Trek? Like you, you actually want to inflict that writing upon the crowd? No, you're great. Like, like at this point, I want ChatGPT. I'm sorry, and I'm saying this as a live streamer, okay? Like, uh, AI is going to replace me in the future as well. Like, I already seen AI doing that. But at least in the dystopia where everyone is jobless, I will have some entertainment because I trust the AI far more to entertain me than I trust these individuals who, who are trying to guilt trip me and saying, oh, like, they're female writers. It's like, I don't care. Genuinely do not care whether they're female writers, whether they're AI writers, whether they're male writers, like at least just write something good. The only thing that I care about is write something good so I can spend some money and, and watch the entertainment. But this is the problem, right? Like if people don't spend money to watch the entertainment, then the company doesn't have money to pay you, which is why you're striking. So instead of striking, maybe you should figure out how to write more compelling stories. Although, I, I don't even know how much blame should fall on the writers themselves, because given America modern political correctness, they're not allowed to write something that's interesting. I mean, we're looking at how they're making remakes of all the movies, like for example, Disney is making remakes of the stuff, and you have in the video gaming world, making remakes of GTA and um, other video games. The first thing they do is like they remove the things that are offensive, and the reason... There are things that are offensive is because these corporations themselves consider that those jokes are offensive. So the corporations say, okay, well, culture, mother culture considers this offensive. And then when they make remakes of movies, they're like, oh, well, we need to remove the things that we decided are offensive. And of course, you can't write compelling, interesting stories. Like none, none of the things that I saw in the 90s could be written today. You wouldn't be able to write uh, South Park. You wouldn't be able to write... Beavis and Butthead, you wouldn't be able to write Cleopatra, like, like all of these things would be considered unacceptable today because they're offensive, so boondocks wouldn't exist, right, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much I should blame the writers, honestly, but uh, I do blame them for their very cringy signposts, like, th these are just abysmal, just go home, open chat GPT, ask it to write some slogans for you, and use those. Trust me, like you're going to get more sympathy from the crowd. Let me know what you guys think, and as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.